Good morning, guys. Welcome to Miranda Detailing. So in today's episode, we have this brand new Mazda CX-30 in for our new car prep and ceramic coating. It's gonna receive a two-year ceramic coating. And this paint is really thin. So we're also gonna talk about that. We're gonna show you the measurements on it for a brand new vehicle. Not good. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. So all that and more, let's get started. And we're also going to be using our new pad washer from Lake Country. And I have like a billion pads to wash because it's been a busy week last week. Today's Monday and I haven't washed any of the pads just for this video. So I'm going to be washing those pads. So stay tuned. At the end, we're going to wash all those pads with the new Lake Country pad washer. So let's take a look at the Mazda. This is a 2022 Mazda CX-30. Came in for our new car prep. Bird droppings. Just your normal junk it wasn't it, i don't think this was washed since uh, the customer bought it so it's a good thing because it's coming straight to us without going anywhere else to get washed and potentially get some damage on it lots of plastic which is a good and a bad thing it means you know lots of plastic to coat however less paint to polish so eh, it kind of balances out don't forget to get all these little cracks and crevices here as well we'll flush everything out Make sure everything is nice and clean so when we get to polishing you know we we do want to dry everything properly too because when you polish it vibrates the panels water seeps out so we try to dry everything as much as possible but i think this is pretty straightforward we'll check out the paint see if there's any dust nibs or hazing spots that need to be removed but this will receive a paint enhancement not just a prep polish if you want to check out that video um, where i talk about polishing before ceramic coatings is it needed what should you do check out the video up in the card it's actually a, a full of information it's a long video if you are detailing as a business it is worth watching the entire video because i share a lot of information in that like i do in all of our videos so once again we're going to start with the apc rinsing and here's a question i get often will apc rinsing damage plastics it's a good question but you have to think about well what apc are you using are you in full sunlight? Is the vehicle hot? All those things come into play. On a cool vehicle, even if you're in the full sun, and you know, on a, a relatively cool vehicle, you wanna rinse everything first. Use an APC. If you're gonna use super clean, something very strong or extra tough, dilute it appropriately. Usually one to four or more, but if you do one to four and you wet the vehicle, it's gonna dilute it even more once it hits the panel, and that's okay. But it's not gonna damage anything unless you just let it dry on there. You don't have to let it dwell for many, many minutes. 30 to 60 seconds is all it takes and then rinse it off. So it's not gonna damage anything unless the vehicle already has previous damage. So assess the vehicle, make sure everything is good and then you can go ahead and do your APC rinsing. But if you're in doubt, then use a dedicated pre-wash foam that is a higher pH but you can foam it onto the vehicle with a foam cannon or an IK Foamer Pro 12, like you're gonna see us do today. So in the IK Foamer, we have super clean diluted one to four. And I just go back and forth between super clean or one of the Kosh Chemi Active Foam or Super Foam, um, you know, shampoos. But either one is fine. It just depends on your, your budget and, and what you can get easily. So you can use pretty much any type of all-purpose cleaner. If you want to use the Meguiar Super Citrus Power Clean, if you want to use the Kosh Chemi, I mean, not the Kosh Chemi, well, you can use Kosh Chemi Green Star if you want to use P&S All-Purpose Cleaner, if you want to use Super Degreaser. Dilute those appropriately, either one to four, one to five, one to 10, test it out, go with the weaker dilution first and then go up from there and then see what you need. But once again, if you're in full sunlight and you're dealing with plastics or you know, you're worried about glass, it being on the glass like that, let it sit for 30, 60 seconds and then you can just rinse it off. But just make sure that the panel is 
rinsed first and at least relatively cool. Don't spray this on a hot car without rinsing it first. It's just not a good idea. So if you're worried about it not having as much impact on the panel, and I know there's a lot of talk about panel impact ratio, don't be overly concerned about that. That's a little over the top. So you don't really need to worry about that. You don't have to do all the calculations and worry about that. As long as it's working for you, just try out different dilutions and find one that works. We find that either one to four or one to 10 works for us. We keep it simple and it simply works. That's why we stick with it. No damage to plastics, completely fine. No damage to glass, completely fine. Not a big deal at all. Once again, the reason for the APC rinse or this type of pre-wash is to soften up all of the junk on the paint first before we contact wash. It's a very important step, at least for us. We found in our process, it's extremely important skipping this step actually increases the risk of grinding dirt and particles and junk into the paint. Doing this step dramatically reduces that, I'm gonna say safely between 75 to 90%, depending on the vehicle and the condition of the vehicle that you're working on. But for this, it's a brand new car. Um, there's not much on it. So this is going to remove 90% of it. Whatever's left in the paint is a very, very minor film of maybe a traffic film that's easily dissolved away with the shampoo, the next foaming and contact stage uh, wash. And rinsing thoroughly like this with a, a nice pressure washer, you don't have to have anything too crazy. This is the AR Blue 630. Um, it puts out about 1200, 1300 PSI, which is perfect. By the time it gets out of here, it reduces a little bit more. I do have this nice MTM tip. It's a rubberized tip. Um, so not just for protection, but is also, I think it's a, I think it's a 5.0 or maybe it's a 4.0. Um, I'm not too concerned about the output and all of that. It's a 25 degree tip. I just really like this tip. The moment I started using it, it just, it makes a difference. I think it's a nice even stream of water and I feel that it puts out a little bit more water, which is nice. It feels like it increases the flow, but it rinses extremely well. That's why I like this, this tip. The other tips are completely fine. I use them for 12 years. I just switched over to this one and now I'm hooked. I like it. And once again, is it a life-changing tool? No, it's not. It's just an upgrade. It's something that I like to add on to my detailing tools. And I think it just makes the whole process nicer. It's nothing that you need to have. So don't think that I'm like pushing it or promoting it just because. No, get it because you like it, because you want to get it, because you can afford it. Not because it's going to magically do something different for your detailing business. It's not, it's just a nice upgrade. Same with the gun, I upgraded the gun. Same swivel handle as before, a little bit pricier, but again, it's just a nice upgrade. If you wanna upgrade, you can. If you don't need to, then don't. Stick with what works. Now, if you leave a little bit of residue like this or a little bit of the cleaner on here, not a big deal. I'm gonna foam right over it anyway. So don't worry about rinsing all of it off because you're gonna be using up more water if you're a mobile guy, which I still have the trailer for sale. Maybe it, sell, it sells by the time I got this video out, but if not, I'll have it linked down below. Uh, but yeah, it's okay to leave it like that because you're gonna foam right over it in a couple of seconds anyway. a G Technic citrus foam in here. Don't forget to foam up your wheel buckets. Oh wow, the paint is actually a little gritty. And the glasses too. Oh man. Oh, it's not bad though. One wipe and it just comes right off. Drama queen. Oh really? How dare you? How dare you? So I got the new work stuff, clay mitt, and I gotta say I'm hooked. It is really nice. It's better than the little cheapy ones that I get, 
which the cheap ones I get are fine too, but yeah, the quality of this one, way better, way better. I can definitely feel it and, and it's still affordable. You know, the other ones I, were, I was getting, they're really cheap. You can get like a two pack for maybe like 20 bucks or so. Um, that, that's really, really affordable and those work. I mean, I've used those for years and years and years. But again, if you wanna upgrade, it's totally up to you. If you feel like you wanna use nicer things, um, then that's, that's totally fine. Just, you know, if you need to adjust your detailing prices accordingly to pay for that, then do so. That's totally fine too. The more money that you make in your detailing business, the nicer upgrades that you can make. And it's not necessarily 100% needed to do those upgrades to you know, think that it's going to increase the quality of your work. It's gonna increase the enjoyability factor, if that's a thing. I think it is a thing. It's a thing for us. The enjoyability factor goes up by 100. It's a thing. It's a thing. You don't think it's a thing? Well, of course I made it up, but I still think it's a thing. Your enjoyability factor has not gone up from when we used to do mobile with crappy equipment. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, what? I didn't shoot the car. Yeah, and if you did, it would have been a rubber tip, so that's okay. Goodness. Well, it's a good thing that you didn't hit the car. <laughs> we almost pulled an Allen. Sorry, Allen, I know. You're not going to let that one down for any time soon. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Good. <laughs> you reach the top. Yeah, I don't even need a ladder. Look at that. <laughs> a ring of tang arms. That's my superpower, Mr. Long Arm Man. Or maybe it's like Mr. Fantastic. I'm Mr. Fantastic. Wheels, tires. Oh boy, it's hot. I apologize if there's background noise. We got the fans going, we got the AC going. We just blow dry this a second time. It's just always good to do. The, the big ego blower gets the majority of it, the towel, and then you bring it in here and then you do it again to get all the cracks and crevices completely dry. But look guys, look at that bird bomb did. Mmm, that should come out. That should come out. That shouldn't be too big of a problem. But you can see here, that's, a denibbing gone wrong. They just didn't finish it down. That's wet sanding. If you look really close, you can see a little cluster of sanding marks there. And it's right on the edge. So you gotta be careful with that. 
it, you know, you can, you can go over that edge just carefully. But look at the paint, it is beautiful and pretty much swirl free. So all we're doing is seeking and destroying little defects like this and making sure that the paint is looking good throughout. Oh, what's up, Alan? Ting! Uh, let's get the light. And overall, down here, look, see, you always see marring down here. It's always crazy. But it's not bad. That's, that will come out easily. That is really very, very easily polished out, even just with a gentle wet wet. Even just with a gentle prep polish, that will come out. That's very, very light white wash marring, but I don't really see a lot of heavy stuff. The, the black gloss, yeah, 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 that, that's inevitable. I really do want to offer PPF for this, for the black gloss pieces here. I think I might do that in the future, but the thing is I'll have to either pre-order it, pre-cut, or bulk it but that takes, the bulk cutting it takes so much more work, you know, just getting a piece and then cutting it. It's, it's a little bit more risky, it takes a little bit more work. I think the pre-cut pieces would be better, but that's something I have to talk to my customer about beforehand because I have to pre-order it. And once I get it, they, to, if they back out of it, now I'm stuck with PPF that's only for this vehicle. So if they do that, they have to prepay for it. And it's basically, you know, if they don't want it put on, I'll just give it to them because they paid for it. But you know, usually when they, you know, if you're going to put PPF like that and you have them pre-order it, it's non-refundable because that's a special order thing. So when you talk to your customer about that, just, just make sure that they are 100% sure. Took the plate off. We're going to polish behind there. I don't see any other, uh, the bumper. No, the bumper looks actually pretty good. Not bad. I'm not seeing any other dust nib issues. Oh, wait, wait. Nope, that's just a reflection. Uh, yeah. Not bad. Not bad. That will polish out pretty easy. So it looks like the only issue, oh, there's a little, little staining there. We're also going to polish the windshield and, and coat that as well. But the only problems that I'm seeing are just on the hood, which again, that's the largest part of the vehicle, largest painted part. So this we're going to dig out and this area over here, we're also going to dig out. Make sure they didn't go into the panel. No, they're just there. Okay. Not bad. Let's get to polishing. We'll get all those marks out. I'll show you getting those marks out and we'll blast through the rest of it because, you know, maybe I'll show you a 50-50 between the doors, polished and unpolished, because um, that is kind of nice to show, but this should be pretty easy. You can use whatever foam pad you want. It's all up to you now. Goodness, that's violent sounding. Dear. My goodness! Ah, oh, these doors, they just keep dripping and dripping and dripping. No, 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 That's mine. Somebody's a jerk. A big old jerk. Holy moly. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's like... Oh, look at that. Okay. Like this. Yeah. Wow, look. Like all those water spots that are up here. Gorgeous. Gone. Gorgeous. Just look at that. Sapphire. Just look at that. Just look at so that. Just look at that. Look at that. So I'm going to switch to a cutting pad. This is the work stuff cutting pad. 
I haven't used a lot of the work stuff pads, but let's give it a try. Can you grab the air compressor, please? All right, prime example. You see all the dust? <laughs> see all the dust? It's a brand new pad. Sometimes it just happens. So if there's dusting, it's not always the polish. Sometimes it's just the pad, whether it's new or it's clean. Sometimes it, there's residue or it's just the pad breaking in and it causes that dust. That happens. So, no, it's not. It just happens. Wow. That is, mm, it's deep. Oh my gosh. So I'm taking measurements on this. And good thing I did. This is the problem with new cars. What is going on? And I measured everywhere and it is three mils and under, two point, oh my goodness. What? That is extremely bad. I measured all over the place, all over the vehicle, and these are the average readings I'm getting. That is not good. So this spot right here, I'm not going any further on because it's already at 2.6. That's really bad. Brand new Mazda. Their paint, at least on this model, is extremely thin. Don't wet sand, don't paint correct, don't try to get out deep scratches. You're gonna do a light paint enhancement, that's it. That is really bad. Can't believe that, that is insane. It's so thin everywhere. So the polishing is now all done, and as you saw, the paint is so thick. We had to really be careful with polishing. But the bird dropping, gone, and the little edge here, gone. It looks totally fine. I'm not gonna go any further. We had some other little issues back here that it looked like it got, I don't know if it was from a garage door or what, but look, an actual chip right there. I'm gonna fill it in before we coat it. And there's some other weird little spots on the roof. I don't know what they did at the dealership. It, it looks decent, it's fine. I'm, I'm saying it's like 95% defect free and clear. There's just little things here and there that if you, you really had to search for them to find them, but otherwise it's fine. Um, I'm not going any further because the paint is so thin. That is just unbelievable. So it looks really good now. We're gonna do, give it a panel wipe. There's just a little bit of residue that we still have to um, remove the, um, Rupes Pure has a little bit of residue that it leaves behind. It, it, it smears just a little bit. You have to use very little of it. I'm talking about for one whole panel here, like one pea size drop. 
that's it. It's like using the NSP polishes. It leaves a little bit of a residue behind. I don't know why. Um, supposedly you can coat right over it, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't like that residue and it's not designed as a primer necessarily. So I am gonna do a very light IPA. I'm gonna use Gion Prep because uh, I actually got some of it and I really like it. I like the Meguiar's Surface Prep as well. I use those interchangeably. They're both great. We're gonna give it a quick panel wipe. We're gonna to get to coating the plastic, the wheels, and the paint. So we'll probably split that up. Wifey, do you wanna do trim and wheels or do you wanna do paint? Paint. Okay, I guess she's doing paint and I'm doing trim and wheels. What's with the face? All right, the Mazda is all done. Everything is looking gorgeous. The paint's all done. Wifey hit all of the paint, except for the top, for obvious reasons. I took care of all the wheels, tires, and the trim. All the glass is also coated. The back glass, the sunroof, and the windshield, we use a stronger coating. The, the back glass here in the sunroof will last many, many years, and the same with the side glass. While the windshield, typically 18 to 24 months because of abrasion and everything that hits it, you have to recoat that at least every two years. I, I haven't really seen a windshield coating go past that. Plus, you need to clean it regularly, and you can have a certain topper that you put on the windshield. You can even put other Rain-X type spray products on top of the coating. It's fine. It may not last as long, but it's, it's okay. But typically 18 to 24 months for the windshield. We coated this with XOV4, and XOV4 on its own, one layer, can get you 18 to 24 months. Again, properly maintaining it. We've seen it go past that, the older versions, in fact. The version uh, two and three that we used to use, we've seen those go past two years. So that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. As usual, tools and products will be listed down below in the description. And if you go shopping at Car Supplies Warehouse and buy some tools and products, Enter code Miranda10, you'll get 10% off. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. Say it. So you don't miss stuff. And we'll see you guys in the next one. All right, the Mazda is done. It is now the next day. The customer is going to come and pick it up in just a few minutes. And once the car is gone, I have some pads to clean. This is our sink full of pads. Uh, the bucket actually sat on them, so that's okay. They'll spring back to life after we wash them. This, oh, this is actually just a bag for one of our ATVs. But the pad washer here is what we're going to focus on next. We have the Snappy Clean Boost. So I am going to dissolve this in hot water below the bucket. I'll show you this system in just a moment. So I have filled up the bucket, about a gallon and a half of water, and I just put in that little Snappy Clean powdered cleaner. So I'm gonna let that dissolve. Now I fill this with hot water. I like to wash with hot water. You can fill it with cold or lukewarm, whatever. I like hot water. We're gonna let that dissolve. I'll probably mix it a little bit. I have a little flexible ruler. I'm gonna mix it and that creates a gallon and a half of pad cleaner. So we'll let that dissolve fully. Next, the whole assembly just snaps into place. Make sure Everything is snapped down into place. Give it a couple of pushes. Oh, there we go. And the cleaner pushes through the top here and goes into the separate basin that you saw, this whole assembly here. This will catch all the dirty water. So I know that some detailers um, use this 
in between polishing panels. So they can use one pad. When it gets grungy, they clean it, dry it out, spin it dry, and it's still a little wet, but they put their polisher compound right back onto it and start polishing again on the panel. Now, there's some pros and cons to that. Now you don't have to press down hard on this. I'm not doing that, it's just, it's just vibrating. Um, but I put it on speed one and I'm just working it around this. This is actually textured here and it does a lot of the cleaning. Look, it already did a great job. And then we dry it, and look how nice it looks. It does clean the pads really, really well. To put polish or compound back onto here, it is gonna create more of a mess. I've done it before, and it does create a little bit of a mess. Does it keep your pads cooler? Yeah, probably, but I wouldn't use it for like final polishing because for one, you don't need to load up your pad to final polish, and it is going to create lots of overspray. So, uh, I don't know. If you do it, let me know how it works for you. If you, you know, clean in between polishing panels or, you know, you do a couple of panels, the, the pad gets grungy, you clean it, you run it basically to, to get it as dry as possible and then put more compounder polish and go right back to the panel. Does it create an overspray mist? Because even right now, it creates a mist on my hands. And I can see that that causes some problems when you're polishing on a panel. It's going to kind of mist out wet polish onto your adjacent panels. I've done it before with, you know, cleaning the pads and drying them on the polisher and then going back to compounding and polishing and that's what it did to me. So, I use this. For me, I use this at the end of the job. I'm not going to clean in between panels. I'm just going to grab a new pad, switch it out, get right back to work. This is at the end of the job. That's just me. That's just what I'm going to do. Now, is it worth it buying something like this? Only if you want it. It's not 100% necessary. I've washed my pads like this for years in the sink. Is it absolutely needed? No, it's more of a luxury item. So don't get it thinking that it's going to change your world. It's not. Get it because you have the money to do so that you want to put back into your business and you want to not have to squeeze things out with your hands and wash in the sink all the time like that. You want to use a bucket washer or a pad washer like this that's in a bucket. Uh, this will go onto any other five gallon bucket as well. You don't have to have this particular bucket, but the system itself will go into any five gallon bucket and you can put any cleaner you want. You put your water, then you can put an all purpose cleaner. You can put Dawn, you can put whatever you want. You can get the powdered cleaners, if that's something that you like. I think those are a little bit more cost effective if you get um, like a jar and you just put like a scoop of the powder in there, that will last you a long time. So it's up to you guys. Do you want something like this that you just wash all your pads at the end of the day? Because it is kind of easy once you have this set up, um, but you know, you gotta spend some money on it as well. cleans it so fast. It really does. It is faster than doing it in the sink and it uses less water. Here's a gross one. All right, not bad. Again, that's just black staining from the polish. It's not going to come out. Here's a heavier cut pad.
And I bump up the speed at the end to rinse it and to dry it. Good as new. I used up almost all of the water. So this thing is full, full of gross water. And once I did that, I unplugged it and it's going into the bottom. So that's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of everything. So there's another pro to this is the amount of water used a gallon and a half. That's it. As opposed to maybe using many, 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 many gallons doing it just in the sink alone. So that is a pro as well. That's uh, it's actually very environmentally conscious. I'm just going to rinse all of this out too. So once again, very, very nice, heavy construction on this. Now I don't have the older version. I've never used the older version, so I can't compare it. But what I can say is this version is extremely nice. This locks down. You can take all of this apart if you wanted to and unscrew all of these things. This controls the spring action. And then this goes right into the little hole here and seals everything up so your dirty water always stays in here. And that will seal once you put everything down. So overall final thoughts, once again, if you need it or if you want it, I'm not saying it's a need, it's a want. If you want it, check out the links down below because it is a really, really nice system and it cleaned all of these pads with a gallon and a half of water. They're spun dry. What I do is I have another rack system kind of like this and I place them all down like this with the Velcro side up. That way water drips down. You don't want to do it this way only because water collects here and it takes longer to dry. So what you want to do is have them all face down like so. Or if you have a Velcro system, you can put it on a wall and let it drip like that. That's also a good method. Now, my friend Tony Ralda has uh, designed some of his builds so that there's Velcro on the roof of his builds in the vans and he just Velcros the pads underneath like this. They dry and then they're ready to use. Brilliant system. But I must say, um, I made quite the mess. It does kind of spin the water, flinging the water around. So do this when you have no cars in your garage or shop or just do it outside.